Skankfest recently, right? Just the other day. And I'm definitely aiming to go next year. That's my plan. I want to go to Skankfest next year. Hopefully they have it in New York so I can go back to New York again because the last time I went to New York was like 20, no, 2007 or 2008 or something crazy like that. Um, so I'd love to go back to New York again. But if they do it in Las Vegas, then I'll have to be in Las Vegas. So fuck it. Let's do Las Vegas. But it happened. It looked really fun. It looked really cool. And as part of Skankfest, they did a one-off special episode of Bastard Radio, which is one of my favorite shows. I'm so pissed off they don't continue doing it. I think they're doing it for a bit during the pandemic. It was a show with um, Luis J. Gomez, Nick Mullen, and Tim Dillon. Really, really entertaining. Really, really good. And obviously, those three kind of bring the best out of each other. So they did a special kind of one-off one at Flipping Skankfest and... They ended up talking about our boy Brendan Schaub and Joe Rogan, all that good stuff, and it's pretty hilarious. And this is the clip. Um, hopefully, it still plays because Luis J. Gomez is being a redact and taking everything down because he bloody did this with fucking some app or some website called Mead. What's it called? Mint Media or some bullshit and didn't really stream it correctly. People had to pay, what was it, like $300 or $100 or some shit to watch this stuff live stream for one time only. Um, and it obviously didn't work correctly because anything to do with Gas Digital and to do with fucking streaming and media management and all that stuff, they kind of mess up. Even though I know it's hard to do, to buy server spaces, to have enough bandwidth or whatever, all this stuff. I know it's not the easiest thing to kind of build up your own platform, but still anything associated with them, there's always going to be tech issues and people are complaining about it all day long, but some people didn't manage to clip it. We're going to play that little clip now. I just, I just remembered, yeah. We did, by the way, Gilbert Gottfried and um, uh, Danny Tanner, whatever his name is, Bob Saget. <laughs> and don't complain about the noise. I think somebody screen recorded this. So, sorry, don't complain about the volume. I think somebody screen recorded this, so the volume isn't the greatest. So if it's low, it's not me, it's the clip. Their last festivals were Skankfest. <laughs> no, I felt like an in memoriam thing. I'm saying we actually probably killed them. Yeah. It's a great, it's a storied career <laughs> that ends with Skankfest. That's a real. He's done a lot. It's beautiful. All right, so uh, all this tragic stuff happens, and then the most tragic thing that happened in April was Brendan Sharp releases Gringo Poppy <laughs> on April 28th, 2022. I don't understand, I don't understand the Brendan Sharp hate, right? Because, I mean, obviously I understand it. But, like, right. <laughs> but everybody's doing it now, you know what I mean? It's, 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 people are very angry. At well, it's like, because comedians are all, like, emotionally stunted people. Yes. And it's like... You know what's funny? You know why everyone's doing it now? Because of Kalila and Annie Liederman. If Kalila and Ali Liederman didn't... Did I say her name right? It sounds like I'm saying it different, aren't I? It doesn't matter. If Kalila and Annie didn't jump out the window and say what they said about Brendan in terms of him jumping into their DMs or offering one of them a fucking truck walk, none of these fucking comedians who are murderers and who are alphas and who are badass and all this nonsense would have had the guts to say what they said about brendan none of them because the community turned on them quickly they then kind of jumped in and started to kick the guy while he was down but while we were all laughing at the dude especially on the subreddit taking a piss of everything he says and pointing out how awful of a human being he is all of these guys were saying but he's a really nice guy he's a really nice guy because they're all scared because they all went to get on rogan and they knew if they dissed his fucking pet toy that they wouldn't get on the fucking show but the moment two women stepped up and showed them to what it looks like to have actual balls suddenly now they all want to say something and they all want to chime in it's too late your motherfuckers it's too fucking late it's like somebody broke the day i don't know who it was but one guy was like what if we made fun of the retarded kid yeah and now everybody's like get him and yeah I don't know yes. fuck. thank you the great mike harrington great here's a here's a reality he brandon has a legal right to do comedy Yes. <laughs> that's the, that's the, we live in America, and he is legally allowed yeah. to do stand-up comedy. And that's a country I love. And it's a country I love. You know, so what are I know, but it's like, it's, yeah, it's shooting, that, shooting on Brendan Schaub. It's like, you know that scene in The Simpsons where Marge is like, Homer, there's that bird you like to argue with. Yeah. And then he goes and he argues to the parrot. It's like, who's watching that? And it's like, 
yeah. he's really thinking like, oh, I got to tell this guy he's bad. What if in 10 years he becomes the greatest comedian to ever? Like, what if he does, starts with Carlin level? Yeah, I was about to say the same thing, uh, Marty Moose. That background is fucking hard, isn't it? With the, all the buildings on fire. That is fucking awesome. I'm not going to lie. Prior, brilliant, sh like, brilliant shit. Um, I don't know if he can get, ever get to Carlton level. <laughs> <laughs> George Carlton. Yeah, look, everyone, look, it, it's the button in the room that you're not supposed to push because we all want to get on Joe Rogan, and I just couldn't stop pushing that button. What do you want me to say, dude? If somebody says don't push that button, you're going to push that button, you know? And I Isn't it a bit redacted, though, that if you take the piss out of Brendan, it means you can't go on Rogan? Basically, that's why Luis J. Gomez didn't go back on there. But then to be fair to him, to be fair to Rogan, I don't think it's because of that. I just don't think he likes Luis J. Gomez. I think when he had Luis J. Gomez, Dave Smith and Jay Wilkerson on the show as part of what, what what's that thing they called Legion of Skanks, he didn't like them. He only liked Dave Smith, really. He didn't really get on well with um, Big J. He didn't like fucking Luis J. And I think that's why he hasn't invited him back on the show. Not to do with the Brendan thing, but I think it is a bit redacted if um, you can't take the piss of another comedian, especially if they're terrible at what they do. And that's going to cost you an opportunity to go on the show. That's a bit nonsense. And it also proves what happened to Bobby Lee is something that happens quite often. When the accusation was that when the whole Brendan and fucking Kalila thing was happening, Brian Callum was on the phone or Brendan was on the phone berating Bobby and basically saying, we're going to tell Joe and essentially threatening his career with fucking Joe Rogan. So they do do it between each other and use the fact that some of them are closer to Rogan and some of them than the others to kind of have people kind of stay well behaved and to keep their name out of their mouth and all this sort of shit. It's really, really gross. And I watched an apple with him. I went on Tim Dillon's show, and he just could not push that button. <laughs> I did. We talked about it. I know. When Gringo, Gringo Poppy came out, you were like, ah, it stinks. <laughs> no. It, no. Here's the deal, Brendan. I, I, he's a nice guy. He's genuinely a nice guy. Like, he's a nice guy. He's a nice, nice, nice guy one more time. He's a nice guy seven he times in a row. He's a nice guy. He's not Richard Pryor. I think that's... Fair. Yeah. And I don't think Rogan thinks he's the greatest comedian in the world either. Yeah. I don't think Rogan's like, Brendan, mom, he's the best. <laughs> it's a fucking best, mom. <laughs> No, we don't expect him to do that. Good impression of Joe Biden. We don't expect Joe Rogan to say Brendan's comedy is not good. But the thing that was annoying me and annoying other fans, I'm assuming, is that they couldn't figure out or they couldn't work out in their brains why somebody would dislike Brendan. They couldn't figure it out. It didn't make sense to them. How can you dislike this guy? He's really nice. It's like, okay, maybe to you in person, but what we've seen online and what he how he presents himself via the only medium that we're going to get to know him by, he does come across like a bit of a dick. It's not a bad thing. You can be a dick and still have a career. There's plenty of people out there that do it. But if people want to point it out, let them point it out without trying to insult their intelligence by saying, oh, no, you don't understand. He's not actually a dick. It's like, OK, maybe not to you because you're fucking Rogan or because you're somebody he needs for a career or whatever. But regular people, yeah, if you don't know the guy and you just saw him online and stuff, you'd be like, yeah, bit of a douche. But it is what it is. Did you see the thing at Dead Man about the lion? It's fucking a lion, man. It's, it's fucking nuts, man. Lions are real. And they're out of his house, man. It's brilliant. <laughs> no. All right, so moving on. My... So that's the, re that's the reason. It's because of the Rogan thing. I really thought it was comedians who were worried that he was going to, like, do karate at them. <laughs> <laughs> I, it would be funny if he started beating up everyone. <laughs> like, if he just came in here right now and just started beating the shit out of all of us, yeah. it would be fun. I've lived Dude, my how entire many... life that way. That's how it's always gone. That's Dude, how many skank fans do you think it would take to beat up Brendan Shaw? He would kill everyone in this room. <laughs> <laughs> he, would, he would just throw it. Someone's everyone like, quick, run. quick, get the gun out of Lewis's ass. <laughs> get the emergency killing Brendan asshole gun. <laughs> Annie Letterman grabs it out of his ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of skank fest. <laughs> we shoot Brendan Shaw in the head and we go, like, thank you, see you next year. <laughs> uh, so, uh, all right, so May, May 3rd, 2022. Brilliant, brilliant little, little clip there, courtesy of Skankfest 2020. 
2022 sorry in fucking las vegas i'm definitely gonna go next year i want to check it out and see what the vibe is saying but a good little summation of what you know the thoughts are around the guy like i said it's just funny that these guys didn't have the balls to say none of this stuff when it was happening in real time and it took two ladies as bill burr would say to basically open the fucking floodgates and now all of a sudden they've all got a voice now all of a sudden they fucking are admitting that they're on the fucking subreddit and that they're homeless cats and using the fucking vernacular that those guys use over there and trying to get involved and act like they're down when they weren't really down because they were all trying to get on rogan and be his best friend but now clearly they're understanding that it's funnier to just be funny and take the piss out of somebody who clearly isn't funny because guess what it's fucking funny you don't have to do it in a mean way you don't have to be derogatory or anything you just have to be funny and you'll definitely be okay for the most part and even if you're not okay who gives a fuck if you can't get a rogue especially if you're a comedian and you're pretty decent and you're funny it doesn't necessarily matter maybe focus on trying to get funny first and sell tickets before you try to get a rogue anyway because some of these guys are fucking you know not the funniest in the world when it comes to that sort of stuff but again who am i to judge because i'm technically not funny either i just rant and rave into a microphone and talk out my ass because guess what i have no friends oh don't you chair